because you want a good harvest. So you hold your mouth. You walk away. Yes. You bite your tongue and you walk away and you give God the glory. Right. Don't try to fight your battle. Don't try to defend yourself. Let them say what they're going to say. Hold your mouth and protect your seed. Yes, yes, that's it. Hold your mouth. Hold what's your attitude. Protect your seed. Protect the quality. Don't sow nothing you don't want to reap. Amen. Don't sow nothing you don't want to reap. Alright. Because when it comes back, it's going to be multiplied. Yes. yes. Protect your seed. God is not mocked. Right. God is not mocked. What a man sow, that also shall he reap. Yes. Even the Christian. Mm -hmm. yes. Alright. I told you, 1 Peter, the third chapter. Yes, Verse number three says, kind of picking up in the middle of this, but <coughs> well, I, let's start at verse number, verse number one. Now, this is talking about women and, and, and being under the submission of your husband, but there are some key principles in here that deals with the sowing of the seed that I want to pull out. Is that okay? Yes, sir. I understand, let me say this, I understand that the key element of what we're about to read is dealing with the wife being submitted to her husband. I understand that. But there are some key elements that deal with sowing and reaping that I want to pull out of this conversation. So my main focus is not the wife and the husband, but my main focus is the sowing and the reaping. Okay. Now, I'm not trying to change the meaning of this scripture. It's about husband and wife. But there are some key elements that deal with the sowing and reaping that I want y'all to see in this. All right. Verse number one says, Likewise, ye wives, be subject to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be warned by the conversation of the wives. What that means is, wife, uh, your husband, doesn't matter if he's not saved, he is still the head of your house. He is still the head of your house. If he ain't saved, he's still the head of your house. And the Bible says, be subject to your husband. That's very important. He says, even if the husband won't go to church, he says, that's okay, because if you live right before him, then your living will be a testimony and a witness to your husband. Amen. That's what the scripture is saying there. Even if your husband won't go to church, he said, if you live based on kingdom principles, he says, your living will be a witness to your husband. All right. Verse number two says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning pla a, a plaited hair, plaited the plaiting of the hair, and of the wearing of gold, or of the putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. Now he says here, sign in verse number two, he says, Let him behold. Behold means to look. He's talking about the husband. He said, let your husband see your chaste behavior, your godly behavior. He won't go to church. He don't want to hear the preacher. He don't want to come into the building. But the Bible says, that's okay. Let him see Christ in you. Let him see your behavior. Let him see the way you behave, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself. And he says, that will be a witness and testimony to your husband. And it will help Bible says even when your husband won't hear the preacher, he'll listen to you. Amen. But you cannot win your husband, or you cannot, listen to this, you cannot reap a spiritual harvest if you are sowing fleshly seed. Yes. If you're going tit for tat with the man, you are sowing fleshly seed, and you're going to reap a fleshly harvest. You're going to receive a corrupt harvest. You have to learn how to sow spiritual seed even when he's on your nerves because you are trying to reap a spiritual harvest. Yes. Amen. Because you going back and forth is only going to give you another level of flesh harvest. 
It's only good. You are sowing to the spirit. When you're arguing, when you're back, going back and forth, he says you are sowing to your spirit. And the only thing you can get from sowing to your spirit is a harvest of the, excuse me, you're sowing to your flesh. And the only thing you can get from your flesh is more flesh. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get spirit from the flesh. So he says to the wife, he says, instead of going tit for tat, he says, sow uh, seed from the spirit. Instead of going tit for tat, he says, be mindful of what you say. What are we talking about? We're talking about how the kingdom works. God, listen, God said the man don't want to hear the preacher. And he ain't coming to church. But if you, by your chase, conversation or lifestyle or way of living, the way you carry yourself, the way you talk to him, if you, by the way you live in front of him, that will draw him. Yes. So if my husband is not saved, how do I get him saved? By sowing seed in the spirit. Yes, sir. And if I sow seed in the spirit, then the harvest is going to be my husband going to get saved. All right. But if you in a relationship and you're sowing seed, arguing and fighting and going toe to toe with the man, you ain't going to never see him saved. God is not mocked. You cannot run your mouth and sow crazy seed and get a good harvest. Say, God no. is not, not. mocked. Yes, sir. He's not, you cannot sow to the flesh and reap from the spirit. Amen. He's giving you the formula here. He said, if you sow to the spirit, then you're going to receive a harvest. All right, let me take you a little bit deeper into this. He says, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of planting or planting the hair and the wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. What is all this? This is the sowing to my flesh. I get my hair done. I get my nails done. I'm getting my outfit right. I'm getting all this stuff right, all this stuff done. This is all sowing to my flesh. I'm not telling you that you can't get your hair done. I'm not telling you that you can't get your nuts done. But what he's trying to show you here is that this right here brings a certain type of harvest. This right here brings a certain type of harvest. Oh, God. This right here brings a certain type of harvest. So if this is not the harvest that you're looking for, then you got to start sowing some other seed. So he says, instead of doing putting all the emphasis on this stuff, the get your hat done, get your nails done, he says, put the emphasis on the inner man. He says, if you're going to sow seed, he says, don't sow the flesh to seed. He says, but rather sow the seed for the spirit. He says, in all of the tension that you're putting on the outward man, he said, put it on the inward man. Yes. Let's just make it plain. All of the attention, money, all of that stuff that you're putting on the outward man, you are sowing to the outward man. You're giving to him to make him look good, to make him smell good, to make yourself feel. You are sowing to the outward man. And I'm not telling you that that's wrong. But what I'm telling you is that sowing to the outward man will never give you a spiritual heart. Sowing to the outward man will never give you a spiritual harvest. If you want a spiritual harvest, the man of God is telling you that you got to worry more about the inward man than you're worrying about the outward man. Because it's the inward man that's going to give you the harvest that you really want. That's when you, when, when you see women that are, and this is very bad in today's society, a lot of women have reduce their value to a physical thing. <coughs> they have reduced their value to a physical thing. They see themselves, that they value themselves from a physical position. That's all they see. See, it's, it's one thing when somebody sees you a certain way. You can survive that. 
It's one thing if Robin don't like me or see me a certain way. I can survive that. But when I take her thoughts and opinion of me and make them my own, mm. now I'm in trouble. Yeah. Mm. See, it's one thing if the world or even men see a woman a certain way. She can survive that. But when she adopts the opinions of the world and of other people as her own, she's in trouble. Yes. She's in trouble. Because now she has allowed the influence on the outside to come on the inside. Yeah. And now she is allowing others to tell her and dictate to her who and what she is. And so when a woman wants to show herself worthy of marriage or worthy of attention or worthy of this or, what, or worthy of being a value, what she do is poke her butt out. Man, I'm Stay right there. That's how she values herself. That's what she has learned from the world. So when she wants to make herself look good, when she wants to show her value, when she wants to show her worth, when she wants to show who she is, she takes a picture like this. Because the world has taught her that that's her work. And she has taken the world's opinion as her own. She is in trouble. When you sow that type of seed in your heart, that's the only type of harvest you get. When you take the picture like this, the only type of man you ever get is the man who sees that. You won't find no husband like that. And so, you can't show that and expect you're going to get someone who's going to value this or treat you a certain way other than what you showed them. Okay, let me say it a different way. <clears throat> when I go to certain restaurants, I go there because they're known for what they serve. Mm -hmm. You go to Red Lobster, you go there for seafood. Mm -hmm. You go to uh, 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 Houston's because you want to get a steak. Mm -hmm. You don't go to Red Lobster to get Italian food because that's not what they serve. That's not what they specialize in. No, no. When the woman values herself a certain way and puts first, puts forth certain types of seed, she's going to get a certain type of harvest. Mm -hmm. That harvest is going to value what he saw. I didn't come here for marriage. I came here for the booty. That's right. Yes. That's true. You're right. I didn't come here for, I, I, you, you, you was not advertising marriage. Uh -huh. You was not advertising a quality relationship. You was not advertising a woman of value, a woman of stuff. That, that, that's not what you put off. That's not what you was promoting. Now I come over here. Now you're trying to sign in marriage. I, I didn't come here for marriage. Yeah, so that's not what you showed me. I came here because of what you showed you. You put something on the commercial. Mm -hmm. I came for what was on the commercial. Now you're trying to sign. Now you, you got an expectation of marriage. I didn't come here for that. I came for the commercial. You sow seeds. I'm the harvest. I'm the harvest of the seeds that you sow. Jesus. Now you complaining, now you crying, now you whining, but I am the harvest of what you sow. You sow seeds that you really didn't want because you thought that God was mocked. Mm -hmm. You was deceived. Mm -hmm. And you thought God was mocked. You thought you could sow one type of seed and get another type. That's what the man tells you. Mm -hmm. yes, God is not mocked. Yes. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. He says, so don't put all your attention on the outward. Put it on the inward because the inward is what you really want. That's the harvest you want. Amen. Amen. that you don't want. Yeah. The harvest that's going to come, you don't want it. You don't want that. You just ain't got enough sense to know yeah. that right. God is not marked. Okay, let me take you a little bit deeper here. 
he says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, that uh, which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet. This is the, this, the, the meek and quiet spirit. Listen to this. This, this is my seed. This is my, ah. Oh. See, some people say, oh, you let it walk. No, no, no. That's my seed. That's my seed. See, you, you look at it and you say, I'm being taken advantage. You said I'm being a fool. But you don't realize that I understand the kingdom. And see, the meek and quiet spirit is my seed. Yes. Yes. Oh, you think you're taking advantage. You think you're getting, no, no, no. This is my seed. I understand the kingdom. This is my, the meek spirit is my seed. The quiet spirit is my seed. Thank you. Quiet spirit. I keep my mouth closed because I'm planting seed. You don't even realize I'm sowing seed all around you. Yes. And whatsoever a man soweth, whatsoever a woman soweth, that also shall he shall she reap. Yes. The harvest is coming in because she's been sowing her seed. The harvest is coming in. He he can't even fight the harvest. He don't even know. She saw a seed. She saw a harvest seeds in her spirit about him. He can't even fight the harvest. He got to come in because God is not wrong. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say she weak. No, she ain't weak. She's strong. She's a wise woman. Amen. The Bible said, wise woman builds her house. Amen. Foolish woman tears it down. Why? What? She's wise. She wise. But then another scripture saying, "He that winneth souls is wise." She's she's not weak. She's spreading seed. That a harvest must come because God is not wrong. All right. So he says here. Um, which is in the sight of God of great price. Talking about that meek and quiet spirit. He says, for after this manner is the, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in who? God. Oh, God. We're talking about kingdom. We're talking about sowing seed. They, uh, this, listen, to the natural eye, this don't make no sense. It don't make no sense for you to be quiet when your boss man trying to take advantage of you and you know the boss man trying to take advantage of you and you ain't saying nothing. Oh, you let him walk on you. You let her. Oh, no, no, no. My trust is in God. Yes. My trust is not in my ability to get them right and tell them how I feel. No. My trust is in God. God is my present help in times of trouble. Not Corey. All right. Corey is not my help in present. Corey going to get me in trouble. But God is a present help in times My trust is in him, not in man. He says here, uh, uh, who trusted in God, they adorn themselves. Oh, God. They adorn themselves. You know what it means to adorn, to adorn, like, um, they, 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 they put ornaments in. You know, how, how you do a Christmas tree or how you... You put the ornaments all around. You put the lights on it. You 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 you, you do all kinds. You put sparkles on. Oh, you just you put all kinds. That the Bible says the woman who learns how to sow to the spirit. The Bible says she adorns herself. She 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 beautifies herself. She glorifies. She puts. She she. I mean, she magnifies herself by her attitude. Yes. I know that the Bible is talking about women in marriage, but I want you to grab a hold also of the bigger picture of sowing to the spirit. Yes. This woman is making a decision to not sow to the flesh, but to sow to her spirit. And the Bible says it's like adorning her spirit. She's putting, it's not a physical adorning. Because the verses above talked about the physical of doing it, of planting the hair and putting on the gold. He says, no, no, no. This is a spiritual adorning. Where you are putting the adorn, you're putting the emphasis and you're putting the beautification on the inner man of the heart and not of the outward man. There's a harvest coming with that. He says here, uh, uh, for after this manner in 
the old times, the holy women also who trusted God and doing themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Like